Hello, everybody. My name is Elle, and thank you so much for tuning into my podcast called A Quiet Voice, where I talk about the thoughts and opinions that run through my mind as an introverted Gen Z. Today on this episode, I will be talking about what it means to be an introvert with the focus of informing people what the possible thoughts could be going through the minds of those people who also identify as introverts. So if you could just get a warm drink, find a comfortable place to sit and relax as I take you on to another trip into my mind. What does it mean to be an introvert? Well, I'm sure that something different for everybody who does identify as an introvert, although there are a few characteristics of which would be able to be broadly applied to everybody who identifies as such. Introverts are typically thought of as being that person who is typically quiet and is quite reserved. They're the people who you may have into your friend group, but they don't participate as much into conversations as other people. They're that kid in class who never seemed to raise their hands regardless of whether or not they knew the answer to the teacher's question. And when called upon, they may have their answer and say it right away, which lets everybody know that they did know the answer, or depending on the type of introversion, they may struggle to actually be able to utter the words of their response, regardless of them knowing it or not. That introverted person can be your coworker in the cubicle next to you, who you say hello to every morning, but you know, very little about that person other than that. You can know what they like to eat for breakfast, that they usually start the day with a cup of coffee and a muffin, a blueberry muffin you may know, but other than that you may not know anything about them. The introvert is the person that is often slightly reserved and slightly outside of the group. This person may be comfortable holding this position or this position bothersome to a great deal as they're often feeling as if they are not, they're not fully a part of the scene that is in front of them and they're nothing more than a spectator watching it play out in front of them. This is a case of which they are standing there going, what's my line? When trying to participate into a group conversation. Sometimes that could be the result of the conversation simply moving too fast for them. For some people are comfortable with one person speaking, another person cutting them off, another person jumping in. That could be a confusing situation for certain types of introverts. Other people can keep up with that sort of momentum, but, but the stanima for that sort of interaction is less so than the people around them. So by the end of the evening, they may end up feeling incredibly drained as if they have used up all of their mental capacity to keep up with that. There could be a friend of which you like to drag out to parties with you. They're that sensible person who never seems to fully lose control and so you can trust them to have your back at the end of the night when you have had too much to drink. They're the person who held it together so you can literally lean on them as you make your way back home. The introvert has been looked upon differently. It is described that introversion is not really a personality trait, but really a form of temperament. So it's the nature part of what makes us us. Being able to identify who is an introvert and who is an extrovert is apparently something that can be cited even during infancy based upon how the child reacts to loud stimuli, whether or not it bothers them or 
they just take it as a grain of salt and continue upon their day. Those who are introverted by nature, even as an infant, may hear loud conversations or some other form of loud stimuli and be bothered by that, such as that baby that cries whenever there is a certain loud noise that occurs. Not all introverts are the same, though. There are different types of introverts with the most common well, one of the most common different frameworks for them to be identified through the star quadrant designation of which there are four basic types of introverts identified. There's the social introvert. The social introvert is the one that surprises people as they can come across as being extroverted if they're around people which they consider close to them. There's the thinking introvert, of which this is the person who gets lost inside of their mind, constantly daydreaming and constantly in some other place rather than where they are physically, and people consider this person to be a dreamer. They don't come across as being anti-social and can often interact in social situations without too much difficulty, but their mind just tends to be elsewhere. There's the anxious introvert, of which this is the person that you consider to be socially awkward or really shy. They're an introvert person, meaning that they prefer to not say that much and be by themselves, but it's mostly fueled by some sort of anxiety into the background, constantly wondering about what other people would think of them and constantly worrying about mistakes that they may have made into the past. This type of introversion is usually compared to those with social anxiety disorder because they do have many similarities, though they do have a separate designation. And then lastly, there is the restraint introvert, being this is the person that is overly cautious. They don't like to agree with social outings that come up spontaneously they think about what they're saying and what actions they're going to be taking. So if you want this person to go out and spend time with you, well, you need to give them enough of a heads up for them to mentally prepare for that outing if you want them to say yes. I myself will fall into that final category as a restraint introvert, getting me to go out and leave my home outside of the regular school or work was a struggle for those who those who managed to pull it off. I can think of only about one instance of which my co-workers had ever managed me to do that. And even at my last job, just me planning out time out of my usual schedule to have a group Skype meeting on my own personal time was extremely difficult for me as I still refused to alter my usual routine too much. The restraint introvert is the person that is typically analytical into the nature of how they perceive and execute their thoughts and actions. We think about the consequences of those thoughts and actions before we actually proceed with them. I suppose that could be seen as sort of second-guessing ourselves with everything that we do. Sometimes I do feel little remnants of the anxious introvert from time to time, as they are known as being the type of introvert who can, instead of sleeping, they would be thinking about a time years ago which they made a certain mistake and that still haunts them to that day. All the times of which I thought about mistakes that I've made and how they still haunt me. All from back in high school and elementary school, things that should have no significance to my life now suddenly would just pop into my mind every now and then and it still bothers me thinking about the things I should have done instead of what I actually did do or say. Being an introvert has had a significant impact upon my life, especially since everybody else in my family is characteristically extrovert, and my behavior has never made sense to them. Yes, there are other factors other than what's just strictly nature to 
explain my introverted tendencies, of which of course I had a speech impairment which never helps your case when it comes to being outgoing. If you have to consciously think of how you're forming your words, then yes, that does put a hindrance on how much you actually want to speak, as it does require a lot more effort from you than from a regular person who has no speech impairment. There was the fact that I moved a lot as a child, which probably did stunt my ability to make long-lasting relationships, and my tendency to compartmentalize my relationships with people. Any friend that I did have was reserved to a specific area of my life. If I associated with that person at school, then they would be my school friend. They would be the person that I spoke to when I came to school. We would talk and sit next to each other when we had class. And then we would talk during lunch break. And when school was over, we would go our separate ways and we wouldn't speak again until the next day of school. The same thing persisted when I did start to work. I would have friends with people at work. And then we would talk during work, socialize on our break. And when work was over, we would go our separate ways and we wouldn't speak until the next day at work when we were both there. To me, that was completely natural. Why would I want to speak with somebody outside of their regular area of which I would interact with them? If I know this person from a particular place and we do talk, then what more is there to say outside of that chosen designation? Why would I need to text them, say, after work, if we spoke during work? What else is there left to say? I never understood the need for people to have these open text conversations with people that they see on a regular basis. Why bother? Why not just save it for the next time in person or what's so important that you have to say it then? To the more socialization, the better, I imagine, at least that's what it seems like, with the constant chatter and always finding new avenues to get to more social interaction. But to me, it always seems so foreign. And I'm not sure about my rigidity in always having a set routine as a result of just my upbringing, so the nurture part of my growing up, or is it a part of the restraint introversion? But I always wondered if it was simply more than just being introverted, of which led me to this sort of personality. Why is it that I don't want to associate with people outside of those chosen environments? Why is it that once I come home, I don't want to speak to anybody else? I don't want to hear my phone go off with a text notification or God forbid have my phone actually ring so that I'll have to actually speak to somebody. No, anybody who's been in my life for an extended period of time knows that if you do expect me to communicate with you while I am home, it will be a text message. There are some people which I don't see in my regular daily life, in which case Yes, I'll be happy to have a text conversation with you. Just don't call me though. If you call me, the first thing I will say is why are you calling me? There was actually one time of which I had a friend who's known me since childhood. It's been over 10 years and we still talk from time to time so he knows me pretty well. In which case, he sent me a text one night asking me when I would be free to talk, meaning he was texting me to find out when he could actually call me because he wanted to have a serious conversation and he knew that being who I am, as I am, that a call out of the blue was not going to be a good way to start it. Serious talk, in which case we set up an appointment and I thought it was ridiculous at the time thinking about why not just call and say, hey, I want to speak to you. Are you free? But after looking back, I realized he actually knew me a bit better than I knew myself at that time because the conversation may have gone a different way 
if he had sprung it on me. And the fact that he took the time to schedule in an appointment so that I had time to prepare for that into my routine, it worked in his favor. That is one characteristic that I firmly have with the restraint introvert. But also, I sometimes question whether or not it was a little bit more than that. But going back to the introversion and how that interacts with my family and those that I encounter in my life, as I said, my family is quite extroverted. With me being so quiet, it never made sense to them. My mother is a loud, bold person who is not afraid to speak her mind in any sort of situation as loud as she wants it. And although my sister is quieter than that, she's never afraid to speak her mind either, but she does it in a much more tactical, strange, calm sort of way that seems to wear people down without them seeing it coming. And both of them had been telling me for years that I needed to change my ways. To them, I was just a shy little girl who needed to grow up. And as the years went on, it became more and more of an issue for them because it seemed as if my growth mentally was stunted when it came to communication. They didn't understand why is it that I didn't want to go out or interact with other people. My sister couldn't understand why is it that when I spent a weekend with her, I may for just once want to stay at her apartment and not have her drag me all around downtown. That I would have just been happy with us sitting on the couch and watching a movie together, rather than to go out and eat at a restaurant. Why would I make that decision when she put aside that time for us to actually go out? And I pondered her back, why can't we just stay in? Would it not be enough? Is that not enough of your time to just stay in and just talk to me and for us to watch a movie? That is one thing of which we still never agreed upon. There were plenty of times of which I wondered if there was actually something wrong with me, of which people have always told me that I needed to change who I was because as I am now, it's just not enough and it's not going to get you anywhere. There were some points of which I admit that they were probably right in the sense that me not saying something when I do have a point to make or something to say was true. I did learn to speak up from time to time, especially in school when dealing with group projects and I did learn to speak up and ended up leading those groups despite my reluctance to actually do so. In which case, I then learned that it's possible to be quiet, but it doesn't mean that you have to be invisible, but it took me a long time to get there. And even so, the path for me to get there was not the road most traveled, because I still remember where I used to be. How I was at one point that girl who just sat into the corner of the playground, leaning against the wall and just watching everybody else have fun, while I was just sitting alone. All through my time in high school, of which I had books all around me because that was the best way for me to get some sort of information of what's considered normal. And the characters and the stories would teach me what it means to have a conversation with somebody else so that I would later end up replicating that same sort of examples in school, through university, and then through work when I was doing customer service. It's not the world most traveled upon, but it's the world that got me here. Now I'm actually starting a podcast and I'm doing the one thing I used to hate doing, which is speaking. Yes, it still takes effort, and you have no idea how much it takes to edit out all of the stutters or the times of which I'm saying not actual words because I can't figure out how to get them out into the moment, but I'm still getting there. And if I need to have a self-monologue in order to get my point across, then that means I just found a way that worked for me.
The world is not presented itself to be one suited for those who are introverted and who just prefer to spend time with themselves. Nothing is gained from a lack of awareness or ignorance of not knowing what actually is there. So a question I pose to myself, me knowing what I know now about introversion and how that's had an effect on my life, would I change myself if I could? If I could change my temperament and suddenly just become an, an extrovert, is that something I would want to do? And the answer is no. I wouldn't change who I am because I'm happy and comfortable with the way that I am and having so much enjoyment out of the little things and being able to find that just my thoughts and knowing who I am is enough for me. I like the fact that being an introvert allows me to recharge myself mentally by being alone and rather than have to depend on others around me to bring myself up. An introvert can think of themselves as being a self-charging battery of which time of which we get acquainted with ourselves and just be by ourselves. It's enough for us to recharge ourselves mentally. I get as much fulfillment with reading a new book than an extrovert would get from going to a concert or some band or singer which they thoroughly enjoy. But my enjoyment from that book has a lot less than a concert ticket. I have learned to appreciate the little things because sometimes the little things are all that you have. And oftentimes those are the really important things. Millennials are known for valuing experiences rather than things, in which case I can't understand the reason behind that, but the things of which we value, they differ greatly. I think this is a good place to end this podcast about introversion, and I hope that as this series continues and you hear more about my life experiences and opinions, I start to make a little bit more sense to you all. Or perhaps you just like to listen to me to hear me ramble on about nothing in particular, as I have been told that I have a calming voice, and it's quite easy for people to tune out of that. If that's what you get from this show, then that's beneficial to you, and I'm happy to be of help. Here at A Quiet Voice.